What's up, YouTube? NinjaNick333 back after a very, very long hiatus. I think like four years. Uh, we're not doing any more crazy Let's Plays unless it's like, I don't know, maybe Vietnamese Crystal will come back at some point because I never finished that and it was pretty sweet. Um, uh, no more Yu-Gi-Oh! because that game is trash. No more Kaijudo because that game is dead. Um... I kind of told myself I would bring back my YouTube if I ever proved to myself that I'm at least a slightly above average player by making a day two at a Pokemon regional. Um, and I have a lot of friends uh, locally who just love the cheese fest that is my YouTube and like can't get enough of it and like really wish that I was still making videos. So this is mostly for them, uh, a little bit for me because I just actually have fun. Uh, I have a lot of fun making YouTube videos. Um, I took it way too seriously trying to like make a career out of it before. I, I'm not even going to monetize my videos, man. It's just like free information for you guys if you want to see stuff, whatever. Um, so this is the uh, this is the deck, Zora Garboder, that I used to make Day 2 at Philadelphia Oaks Regionals. Um, I... Uh, there was, uh, there was a League Cup at my local game store, Kerwin's Game Store in Catskill, New York, um, the week before this tournament. And at that point, I was super hard on Revolt. I thought that was the best deck. I still kind of think that it is the strongest deck overall. However, it's just so easily countered by things like Buzzgarb Shrine and, like, Weavile. Just the fact that Weavile exists, I believe, makes uh, Rayquaza unplayable. Um, like, Weavile is just not, like, a very skill-intensive card, but it really punishes decks like Rayquaza that just, like, overload on abilities. So I don't really think, like, a deck like Revolt is very, like, super viable. Uh, there's really no way to play around Weavile with Rayquaza. Um, the League Cup I was at was streamed to Twitch, so you can check that out, twitch.tv slash... Kerwin's game store. Um, you can see me lose gracefully. Uh, I think game two I was attacking with an Oranguru. It was bad. Like, it's just so one-sided. Um, so anyway, um, on to this tournament. Um, so in preparation for Oaks, I played a lot of Spider-Man on PS4 because I don't play test because I suck and I'm bad. I I'll say that a lot. Uh, that's just something that I always believe, is that I just, like, you know, I think I'm at the point where it's, like, playtesting doesn't really do too much, um, especially since there's, like, nobody in my area that, like, wants to test ever. Like, if I want to test with, like, my friend Chris, like, I have to drive, like, to Albany, like, an hour north, and it's just, like, god-awful. Because I can't, with my work schedule, like, I get out at 7 a lot, and it's just, like, not viable. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we get... Uh, me and my friends get to um, the Expo Center at Friday at like 3, 4 something. Uh, and we, I build Buzz Garb Shrine because I feel like that is the number one deck in the format. And I have no testing with it, so I wanted to play some games of Mirror Match. My friend Hannah was definitely on Buzzgarb Shrine. Uh, my friend Stefan, my friend Eddie, my friend Derry, they're all Buzzgarb Shrine, Buzz Weavile Shrine, Buzz Weavile Garb Shrine. Uh, like, uh, so many people were going to play that deck. I, I knew that I needed to either join it or beat it. So my top three choices for the event were number one Zorark Garb, but I did not have a list for it because I don't play test because I'm stupid and I'm bad and Spider-Man for PS4 is the, one of the greatest games I've ever played in my life and it just happened to come out right before this tournament to screw with my mind. Um, number two was Zark Lycanroc. Um, I'm super comfortable with that deck. Um... I loved the weakness policy version that my friend Mike created that got passed to Chris Saikala, that got passed to Rahul Reddy, that got passed to Ryan Antonucci. So, I, like, I have practice with that. Uh, it's super good. Um, so, I was probably going to play something spicy like that. 
Um, but I did not, I still did not like its Buzz Garb Shrine matchup. I did not like its Buzz Weavile uh, Shrine matchup. Uh, I had no idea how it fared against Shining Lugia. Because that thing came out of, like, nowhere. Um, so, uh, and then my third option was, uh, Buzz Garb Shrine itself. Um, but I only was going to decide to play it if I could beat the mirror. And I played against my friend Hannah. And I, I think I went, like, five and four against her that day at the Expo Center. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, this matchup's a coin flip. <laughs> like, it is just super luck-based. There's, like, no... Like, you can't... You, you just can't beat the mirror. Like, it's just... You, you flip your coin, and you win, or you lose. So, uh, I had decided I did not want to play that. And I literally looked two tables over, and there's my buddy Chris Saikala. And he's playing uh, Zara Garb. So I'm like, sweet, this is like a deck I want to play, right? So I walk over to him, and I'm like, yo, Chris, give me the spice. And he's like, there you go. And I'm like, oh. Uh, so he gave me this list. Um, this is 59 of the 60 cards that he gave me. Uh, he told me that he would really like to fit the Dedene into it. And he told me it had a really good Buzz Shrine matchup. So that's like the two thing. That's the thing that I wanted going into this tournament. It was a good Buzz Shrine matchup. And I wanted to play something Zorark just so that I wouldn't brick. Because I'm notorious for bricking everything always. Uh, he told me to find room for the Dedene. Um, I thought the cut would be either the second... Um, either the second fan club or the third weakness policy. So I ended up cutting the third weakness policy, um, and then I tested a few games against Hannah's uh, Buzzgar Shrine uh, with this, and I didn't really miss the third weakness policy, as I kind of expected. Like, against Buzzgar Shrine, like, you don't really want to have too many Zoroks out at once. You want to have a couple in order to trade, but you don't want to fill your entire board with, like, four of them because you're taking too much Shrine damage if you can't replace it with the Devoured Field or the Field Blower. Um, uh, you don't want to have too many in play for a Weavile to punish you uh, because if you have two of these in a Lele and then they Choice Band you, you die on the Lele. So, um, but the, the two weakness policy seemed fine. Um, since you only have the two in play most of the time in that matchup, you can just slap one on each of them, or slap one on just the active, or just on the bench or whatever, uh, for if you think they're going to do a Guzma play. And it ended up working out fine. So, I liked the Dedene in it, uh, for the Rayquaza matchup, which I only ended up hitting once. So, what are you going to do? Um, let me load up my whole matchup thing here on my phone. So, anyway, uh, let's get into the deck profile first. Um, uh, again, shout out to Chris. I got the list from him. I don't know if it was created by him, or if it's, like, something that was handed to him that was then handed to me, but that's where I got it from, so that's where I'm giving credit to. Um, so you got, we start with the one, uh, the four Zora, uh, with the Ram attack for 20 for a DC. Uh, it's like the only Zora in the game or something at the moment in standard, so that's what you have to play. I mean, Ram is better than nothing. Uh, you have uh, four Zora GX uh, with the trade ability. Trade once per turn, uh, you can discard a card, and if you do, draw two. Uh, drawing cards is really good in the game. Uh, drawing cards without playing a supporter is even better. Uh, so Zorark is just the most consistent deck in the format, and consistency always wins games. Uh, even if Zoark was the uh, weakest type, uh, which it kind of is, being weak to fighting, uh, it's still the strongest because you can just draw cards. Um, Riot of Speeding for DCE does 20 times the amount of Pokemon you have in play. That counts itself, so it can max out at 120. Uh, with Devour Field, 130. With Choice Band, 160. With Kukui, 180. I call that combo the Wombo combo, 
and I will talk about that quite a bit. Uh, I did not realize it was in the deck until like round three. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's, it, this, this deck is great. My biggest concern with the Zarark is always the fact that it has the two-shot things, and the fact that you can have Devoured Field, you can have Choice Band, you can have Kukui, and you can hit 180 on a uh, Rayquaza or on a Bulu to take a one-shot. Uh, is just it's just insane. It's just absolutely insane being able to take a one shot with Zark. Um, so then anyway, we got uh, the one to Dene. Uh, find a friend doesn't matter because we don't play unit. Um, Electro Chain for a DCE does 30 plus 30 if you have a lightning Pokemon on your bench like Tapu Koko. Um, with Choice Band, this goes 3, 6, 9 uh, times 2 for weakness on Rayquaza is 180 to one shot them. Uh, and ended up not mattering in the entire tournament. This card could have been a pseudo wudo, and I would have had a much better tournament experience. Um, the thing is, though, I would still rather have it be the Dedene going into a field that I don't know what my matchups are going to be, because Rayquaza is still just not a good matchup for this deck at all. If your opponent is smart and doesn't use Stormy Winds to discard a whole bunch of cards, they just roll over you, because they can just strong charge twice and then have a bunch of energy, and then you lose. Um, because they don't really play much items if they're not using Stormy Winds to discard them. Uh, so I really feel like the Dedene is needed if you think you're going to hit Ray. If you don't think you're going to hit Ray, and you still want an extra Pokemon to be like a Muscle Band, I would switch it to Sudowoodo, so you have a better Zark Mirror match. Um, this could also be the third weakness policy if you're expecting a lot of Buzz GX and Buzz Garb Shrine. Um... Uh, and here's your Tapu Koko for the Lightning to Electro Chain with Dedene. Uh, you would still want to play this card anyway, just because it's really good. It gives you the free retreat, and it has the attack Flying Flip, again, for DCE. Uh, all of these attackers, except for the Garb, are DCE attackers. Uh, flying Flip does 20 to everything your opponent has. It softens up um, all of their Pokemon. If you do one Flying Flip, their Tapu Lele is at 150, so you can ride us beating it with a Choice Band. Uh, if you Flying Flip a Zorark, they're at 190. Uh, if you Flying Flip it twice, you can do the Wombo Combo with the Zorark to one-shot their Zorark. Uh, it's just really good. I don't think I ever Flying Flipped twice. I think I only Flying Flipped once, and it was just a, two or three times over the course of the tournament. Uh, if your opponent is just like bricking super hard, you're going against like Inkase or something, they all have 60 HP, you can just fly and flip three times and win. So it's just really good. Uh, mostly good for the free retreat. Um, then you have uh, Latios, um, in addition to the Tapu Koko. For, uh, for a DCE, does Breakthrough 30 and 30 to one of their bench Pokemon. Uh, it's a Psychic type, so it hits Psychic Weakness on things like Inkay. It can one-shot them, put 30 on another one. So it makes your Shining Lugia Malamar matchup just like super favored, uh, which I'll get into again later. It also has Lagoon Flight for a Psychic and a DCE, does 70. Uh, in the testing the night before, right after I got the deck at like 6.30, um, I played a bunch of matchups against Buzzguard Trine, and Lagoon Flight was the number one attack I called every single game. I was one-shotting Buzzwolves for 140. I was one shot in Garbodors for 140. I could slap a weakness policy on Latios, and it would resist their Garbodor, and it would just take six prizes. So this card is 100% necessary in the card format in this deck. And it just logged me out. Sweet. <laughs> Let's get back in there. Come on, game. You can do it. And it froze. I'm going to leave this in because it's just funny. <laughs> Alright, uh, so Tapu Lele GX is the next card. Uh, psychic type Pokemon that is not weak to Psychic, which is fantastic. Uh, Wonder Tag ability, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto the bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So you do it to get Lily on first turn and draw a whole bunch of cards. 
I lilied for eight at least twice over the course of the tournament. It's really good. Lily Lele. Um, energy Drive is an insane attack. For DCE, it does 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. Uh, energy Drive is a really good attack. Never forget that you have it. It's really important that you know that you have access to this attack at all times in the game. Uh, and then Tapu Cure, um, which never ended. I, I did not declare any GX attacks the entire tournament, but it still could be worth it if you go against something like Malamar Shrine and they just do a bunch of Cocoa Flips on you and you have a bunch of damage in play or you get Black Ray GX'd. You can Tapu Cure GX for your Psychic Energy, heal all damage from two of your bench Pokemon. Uh, so that can really uh, swing a matchup at some point in the game. Uh, so it's good to remember that you have that. Uh, then you have three of the Bad Trubbish, because Acid Spray rotated RIP Acid Spray. Uh, Acid Spray was a really good card. Um, I did use Stomp Off to discard somebody's Ultra Ball over the course of the tournament, and uh, it ended up mattering because they still top-decked Cynthia, but because they didn't top-deck Ultra Ball, they couldn't get Lele, so they were forced to Cynthia instead of, like, Lily, and I think it mattered, so that was cool, and you can always drool for a Psychic in the DCE, I guess. Uh, then you have Garboder. Uh, with the Trash Lanch attack. Uh, for one Psychic, does 20 times the amount of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. Garbodor is super good post-rotation right now, because uh, cards like Bridget have rotated, so everybody is playing high nest ball counts, high timer ball counts. Um, I think the second place Malamar deck played Friend Ball. Like, you're, there's a lot of decks are playing a lot of items. So Trash Alliance punishes people who play too many items. So no matter what deck you're going against, your opponent's going to play items, and you're going to take a knockout with Trans Trash Alliance at some point during the game. Uh, then it also has an attack that you have to remember that you have Acid Spray for one Psychic and a DCE does 70. Again, that one shot's a buzz wall. Uh, it two shots uh, Buzz GX. It'll one shot Buzz GX if you have a choice band. That ended up mattering, because I almost set up an Acid Spray when I hit a Buzz GX deck in Day 2. Uh, I had no Psychic Energies in my hand, but I slapped down a DCE to threaten the Acid Spray, even though he wasn't playing items. So you just always remember that you have this. Um, and I also used this, other, uh, this attack one other time when that could have mattered if the game finished. Uh, which I'll get into later. Uh, then you have your one copy of Field Blower. Um, low Field Blower counts are okay in this format if you're playing stadiums. If you're not playing stadiums, I think that you should up it higher. Um, I would like more than one Field Blower just because I'm playing the Garb and I can trash a lance for higher numbers with the Field Blower, but there's really just not room in the deck at the moment. Um, maybe after the Elm card comes out, which is like Bridget, then I can increase the Field Blower count but right now it seems fine. Uh, three Nest Ball, search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put onto your bench. Uh, this is just good for setup. Uh, Pal Pad, shuffle two supporters into your deck. This card was MVP the entire tournament. I will explain it when I get to it. Uh, rescue Stretcher times two. Um, put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. Just lets you reuse things like Latios, lets you reuse the Tapu Coco so you can get the Dedenne combo. Uh, lets you, if they knock out a Zorark and you have a Zorark on your bench, it lets you take the Zorark out of your discard, put it back into play. Uh, lets you make sure that the two Garboders that you play is enough. Uh, because you don't need to play more than the two Garbs, but sometimes they knock you out before you get a chance to use it, or you have to discard one early off of a trade or something, and the Rescue Stretcher allows you to not be punished for that. Uh, Two-Timer Ball, because we don't have Evo Soda anymore. Um, I went positive on Timer Balls the entire tournament. I flipped at least one heads on Emmy almost every single... I think I flipped Double Tails twice over the course of the tournament, and, those, and both of those times I still had Ultra Ball in my hand, and a bunch of cards that I could have discarded for Ultra Ball. 
so whiffing the timer ball didn't matter. Uh, every other time, I flipped at least one heads. I think I flipped three or four double heads. Um, two of those double heads didn't matter because I only needed one evolution anyway, and I just searched another one to discard with trade. Uh, then we have the four ultra ball that's pretty obligatory in this format. Um, it's like just the best search card, discard your hand, uh, two cards from your hand, get a Pokemon. Like, it's just good. Gets you Lele, gets you Zark, gets you Garb, gets you the basics. Uh, three Devoured Field, uh, mostly to replace the Shrines, also to bump up your Riotous Beating to 130. In order to one-shot the Buzzwolves, uh, in order to one-shot the Shiny Lugias, uh, if you're short of Pokemon, you still hit 110 on something like a Tapu Koko or a Latios in, like, say, a Mirror. Uh, the card is just good. Uh, you can put it down against Rayquaza because the they, like, already hit 210 as their sweet number anyway. So bumping them up to 220 doesn't make any mathematical difference. Uh, you don't have any Pokemon that are 130. Um, one Ace Rolla. Mostly for like the mirror match and the uh, the Malamar Shrine decks, I guess. Just to like heal damage off your board. Make sure your stuff doesn't die. Move something if it's stuck in the active. Cards is just good. I wish I could play two. There's really only room for one in this particular deck. Uh, three Cynthia. I like higher Cynthia counts. Um, some Zorark decks only play two. Um, I always will play the extra draw supporter in a Zorak deck just because your early game is super important to get a supporter. Uh, if you don't have the Ultra Ball or the Lele, you need to have a draw supporter in your hand. Uh, you can always trade them away later if you don't need them. I usually only play one Cynthia over the course of a game, but you need to play the three in order to make sure that you have the consistency. Again, consistency is key in this game. Uh, you play three Guzma. I wish I played four, but three was cut. Uh, cutting it down to three was okay to have room for the Pow Pad, because you could play three Guzma, then Pow Pad two back in, and essentially play five Guzma over the course of the game. I did that a couple times. Uh, bring up one of their bench Pokemon, then switch yourself. Uh, this card is just insane. This card is so good. It's your boy Guzma. Um. Two Lily, um, you don't want to play just one, because you'll prize it. Um, if you can discard your hand and then play Supporter, you'll want to choose to Lily over Cynthia, um, just because, you know, you can draw six either way. Um, drawing cards until you have eight, if it's the first turn, is super good. Um, so most of the time, first turn, you're going to want to play a couple Nest Balls and an Ultra Ball, thin out your hand, Lily for eight, uh, and then just be all, like, set up. Uh, two Fan Club, which I was a little iffy looking at the list when I first was handed it. Uh, I don't really like Fan Club as a card. I wish it was Bridget. Um, I did end up Fan Clubbing for a Lele at one point because my hand was kind of dead, and I ended up winning that game because of it. So Fan Club is actually a good card. Um... There were quite a few times when I opened a hand that had a Cynthia or a Lily in it, and also Fan Club were a way to get Fan Club, and it was just smarter to use Fan Club to set up and then use Cynthia or Lily the next turn to draw into the evolutions uh, and stuff, you know, so it's just, it's actually really good to have Fan Club in here. Uh, after playing in the tournament, I would not cut the second fan club like I was originally uh, intending to. Uh, cutting the weakness policy uh, was better than cutting the fan club. Fan club I actually used maybe 10 times over the course of the tournament. Uh, actually, that might be an exaggeration. Maybe like 6 or 7 times. Uh, the times I used it, it was super clutch. Uh, but most of the time it was just trade fodder. Uh, 2 Kukui, do not cut it below 2. Kukui in this deck is god. Uh, draw two cards and then do 20 more damage. The draw two cards never mattered. If this was Giovanni's scheme, I would still play it. Uh, just because it's the 20 damage for the Wombo combo is so important. Uh, his card is just so good. There was a game where I pop padded two back in. Like, it was good. Uh, three choice. Again, because of the Wombo combo. 
you want to make sure you have Devoured Veiled Choice Bane Kukui at all times, so that you can one-shot something like a Rayquaza or a Bulu. Um, it also boosts your Trash Lanch damage, because your opponent will try to play around the one-shot, and then, but they can't play around the Choice Band. Or, uh, you know, just, uh, you can put Choice Band on a Coco Flying Flip for 50, uh, Kukui at 70, spread 20 to the bench, and then Riotus Beating the next turn will knock them out with a, your own Kukui, your Choice Band, or something. Three is really good. Uh, two weakness policy. This is for the fighting type Pokemon mostly, uh, Baby Buzzwool and Buzzwool GX, which I expected to see a lot of in the tournament. Um, Zork has a rougher time against them without the weakness policies. Um, if you go against something that where the weakness policy doesn't matter, you can just trade it away, and it doesn't matter. Um, putting a weakness policy on a Garbodor or a Latios can actually matter against uh, a Garbodor or uh, something like that. Um, so that's really cool too. I mean, again, putting a Latios into play using Wiggling Flight with a weakness policy on it auto wins you Buzz Garb Shrine matchups, hands down. Uh, four DCE because it lets almost every guy attack, and four Psychic Energy, not three, four, uh, because you can always trade it away. And you want to make sure you have it for the Trash Lanch, for the Lagoon Flight, for the Tapu Kira GX, in case any of that matters, but mostly for the Trash Lanch. You usually use Trash Lanch as your last attack of the game, so you want to make sure late game you have a Psychic Energy. So that is the whole uh, deck. Um, let me go into the tournament report. Um, the first round of the day. I always lose my first round at regionals, right? Um, I've never won round one at a regional before. I always hit an auto loss. If I'm playing Guardi, I play against Metagross. If I'm playing uh, Zorak, Lycanroc, I hit Guardi. Like, it's just... Or no, I hit... I know at the open I hit Greninja. I was playing Zorak, Lycanroc, and I hit Greninja. And then I hit Guardi afterwards. Um, but like, I always hit like something like an auto loss around one. If I'm playing Turbo Dark, I hit Mega Rayquaza. Like, it's just rough, right? So it was new to hit Malamar Shrine with Shining Lugia around one. Um, after playing this, I realized that it is a straight auto win. Uh, it's just really good. This deck just kind of just like kind of poops all over it, right? Um, the Devoured Field lets you one-shot their Lugia with the Riotus Beating. Um, you can Guzma KO their Inke and put 30 on something else with the Latios. Even if they play the Sudowoodo to make the matchup better, you put the Latios damage on their Shining Lugia so that you can still one-shot it later in the game. Uh, so that's what I did. Game 1, I took 5 prices with Latios. I did have to recycle it once with the Rescue Stretcher. I had a second Rescue Stretcher in my hand for if they killed it again. Um, I would have taken all 6 prizes with Latios if they did not Guzma up my Zark and my uh, and I didn't whiff the Guzma <laughs> to do it again. So, um, would have taken 6 prizes with Latios, didn't. Uh, it's super good. Uh, they had the pseudo in play, so I was like, Guzma, Knockout NK, 30 to Shining Lugia. Guzma, Knockout NK, 30 to Shining Lugia. Guzma, Knockout NK, 30 to Malamar. Guzma, Malamar. Again, I, I used Palpad, so the, I recycled the Guzmas. Uh, and then, uh, and then game two, he just kind of drew bad. Uh, let me load up my thing there. Uh, so that was that. So I won round one, feeling super good, because I know this tournament could go any which way. Usually I lose round one, uh, sometimes lose or tie round two, and then win out until I get to whatever win and ins I have, and then lose them all. So winning round one put me on, like, a path that was uncharted territory for me. Uh, so that was really fun, um, and really cool. Uh, round two, I hit... Uh, Zark Garbodor. 
uh, so I, it was a mirror, and I knew going into it we would tie, just because Zark matchups, I never win, and I never lose. I always tie every time. So I go into it expecting the tie, just because like Zark, like especially you got the healing cards like Acerola. Uh, I assumed going into it that he was probably playing Max Potion. Because my opponents in Zark uh, mirrors always play Max Potion. Uh, so I was just kind of expecting it to be super grindy uh, for me to win a game and for him to win a game. And then game two, uh, game three to just like not be able to be anywhere close to finishing. And that's exactly what happened. I won game one pretty decisively, but it took like 30 minutes. Game two took like 10 or 15 and I lost because I got super unlucky. Um, but that's okay. Um, game, I tried to drag it out a bit because I had the Acerolas to heal off dam the Acerola to heal off damage. I think I pow padded it back in. Like, I was trying to drag out the game so that it could, uh, tie in game two, but there was just no way, uh, there was too much time on the clock, and you can't, like, you just, you can't legally slow play, so... Like, you still have to take, like, actions, like, every five seconds or so in order to not, like, just get crapped on by a judge. So, uh, so I ended up, like, I played game too fast, like, moderately fast, and just, I tried to perform a lot of actions, and it just didn't work. So, game three happened, uh, we got, like, two turns into it, and it tied, and I was kind of happy with that, you know, uh, you know, there's no real way around it in that kind of a matchup, so I would have had to have gotten, I, I would essentially had to have 2 owed him in order to win, is basically how uh, Zorak matchups go. You rarely ever finish a game 3 unless you just like brick one round and scoop early. And game 2 I didn't really feel like scooping, um, although towards the end I think I did scoop because I just knew that I wanted time for game 3. Um, round three, I hit a uh, really good player, Aaron Tarbell, with uh, Buzz Weavile Macargo Shrine, is how I list it in my Hayfon post. Um, game one, I win I'm a super friendly guy <laughs> until I beat him. Uh, um, uh, game one, I won. Uh, it was it was fairly close. I think he got down to two prizes or something, and then I squeaked out the win. Um, game two, he donked me with a beast energy, even though I had weakness policy on my Zora. And then game three was kind of along the same lines as game one again. Um, the game next to ours was somewhat distracting because they had a rulings question about um, effects of attacks versus check for knockouts, like what order they happened. Um, I do kind of know rulings like that. I was a professor for a little bit, even though Pokemon doesn't tell you that you actually pass the background check, so I, it expired before I ever knew I was actually a Pokemon professor. <laughs> um, so, like, that, it's a pretty simple thing. Check for knockouts happens after effects of attacks, right? Uh, and the judge, um, that was explaining the information to them was correct and was telling them that, but he wasn't explaining it well, and I was getting really distracted by it, so in order to end their conversation, I said, it's just like how Bursting Balloon doesn't kill Shaman. And, uh, Aaron got a little upset, and he's just like, oh, that was, that was me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, oh my god, yeah. And he's he's like I didn't I didn't know I was told it was the opposite before that tournament and I'm like yeah I know I understand I I thought the same thing until it happened so uh, um round so I feel a little bad about saying that right in front of him and I didn't really think of it but sorry Aaron uh round four now this is where the tournament gets actually interesting I'm two at one at this point. We just got back from uh, lunch break. I was at Chick-fil-A. Uh, Chick-fil-A is great. If you ever go to a Chick-fil-A, like, just, if you have the option to go, go. Chick-fil-A. Number one. Um, 
So we get back from Chick-fil-A. I'm feeling really great. Got a nice full stomach of chicken. Uh, 2.01 at this point. And then I see my opponent shuffling. And they sh show me fairy energy while they're shuffling. Because they're not like hiding what their deck is. Like they should be. Like when I shuffle, I kind of like go like this. So like the face of my deck is like away from my opponent. Uh, because you don't want to give out any information before the match starts, because it could affect what a Pokemon your opponent starts. Like, if I know I'm hitting a Gardevoir, I'm gonna, s and I'm going first, I'm gonna start Zoa, uh, Zorua, because then I can attack with Zara turn two. Um, but if I'm hitting something like Buzzwall, and I know that going in, I'm not gonna start Zorua, because they're gonna just Sledgehammer or Jet Punch and knock me out. So, you want to keep that information as secret as possible for as long as possible during the tournament. And my opponent showed me a fairy energy, and I'm like, oh crap, I'm hitting Guardy. But then they kept shuffling. And uh, they, we set up, and I started my Zora, and he flips over Mudkip. And I'm like, yo, what did I just hit? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm playing, right? And then he, uh, and then I start thinking about it, and I'm like, is he playing, like, a lowland Executor Swampert? Because he can trade away the energies to Tropical Shake. Like, this could be a really bad matchup. So I Ultra Ball away two choice bands. Thinking that I'm hitting a lowland Executor. Because I'm not actually thinking, like, logically. And sure enough, he was playing Sylveon Gardevoir Swampert. Uh, so I feel really stupid for discarding two of my three put choice bands. Uh, it didn't end up mattering because towards the end of the game, I did get off my prizes the third choice band. And I did end up managing to squeak out that game because he got a slow start. So I was super happy to clutch that one out. Um, game two, uh, he got three Gardevoir and a Swampert into play. Super boosted. I think he had a DC or a Fairy already on his Guardi. Then he super boost energyed it. And then Secret Springs like once or twice onto it. And then a chest is a choice band. And he just like one shot my Zark that had no energy on it because I whiffed a DC. And I'm like, okay, scoop. Uh, and then game three. He starts Mudkip again, I think. Or maybe Ralts, I don't remember. And he had Xerneas GX on his bench. And I'm like, oh crap, what does this even do? I have to pick it up and read it. And it says on its GX attack for two fairy and a colorless. That it moves all the damage on your board to your opponent. And I'm like, oh crap, I can't two-shot this thing. I need to put damage on it right now. Or I need to make sure it doesn't get the three energy. So I can kill it. Uh, and I know that we're running super low on time. So I'm playing at like freaking light speed. Uh, and my opponent is too, um, but he's, well, he's not playing at like light speed, but he's playing fairly fast, but he can't really do anything. So he's like overrunning. He's doing 20 and 20 with the Xerneas GX. He gets the second energy on it. And then I slap on a DC <laughs> and then I kukui. <laughs> and then I acid spray with my Garbodor and I flip heads. And I knock one of those two fairies off. And I'm like, oh crap, I'm going to win this game. As long as we have enough time. And like, the next turn after that, they call time. And I'm like, oh no. We are tying. And he just like bench three Pokemon. And I'm like, ah, okay, we tie. Now my opponent had offered the tie um, before going into game three. Knowing that we were low on time. And I'm like, nah man, I gotta try. I gotta try. I, I gotta get this win. I don't want to tie. And sure enough. Uh, we did tie because we just did not have anywhere near enough time. Uh, if we did have enough time, I would have won. Guaranteed. Uh, he also got a Swampert into play too, so it would have taken like three turns because I would have had to two-shot that. And then he had like a Ralts on his bench or something, uh, but whatever. So uh, I was still happy with a tie, even though I should have won. There's really nothing you could do. Uh, Gardevoir, again, is kind of like a Zorak Mirror. How it's super grindy and it takes forever. Uh, cause you have to two shot them 
and they can heal and you can heal. So, I mean, tie's a tie, it's whatever. Uh, round five, I see my opponent shuffling and I see a fairy energy again. And I'm like, please, God, give me a Lolan Executor. And then I see him continue to shuffle with his Pokemon brand sleeves. And I see a Gardevoir. And I'm like, oh no, not again. So again, I win game two. I, I, I win game one. Took forever. He won game two. Took forever. Uh, or at least I think that was it. It might have been the other way around. Maybe he won game one and I won game two. Or whatever. And then game three didn't finish. But I wasn't drawing as well as I could have been. And he set up really well. So I had no doubt in my mind that had we had like another 15 minutes to finish that game, he would have won. Guaranteed. So I'm, again, really happy with this tie. Uh, so that was nice that I got a tie. So I'm telling all my friends, I'm like, yo, guys, I just hit two Gardevoir decks in a row. And they're like, yo, what's good? It's like, how did you, you survived? You tied both of those? Yo, what's good? How, do, how did you do that? And I'm like, yo, I don't know. <laughs> so then I, go into, then I go into the next round, right? In the round six. And I'm like, there's no way I can hit another Gardevoir, right? Like, there just can't be that many Gardevoirs in the tournament. And sure enough, I see my opponent shuffling. And there's that fairy energy. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Not another tie. I can't handle another tie. Yeah, I already have I already have too many ties. I have three ties already. There's no way. I can't do it. I'm 203. I can't I can't get another tie. I need this tie for my ID and in round because I know I can't win my win and ins. Said so he bricks game one. And I win. And I'm like, yo. And then game two. He bricks again. And I go, Guzma, your only routes, knockout. Guzma, your only routes, knockout. Guzma, your only routes, knockout. So he's forced to put up the Sylveon with a DC and a choice band and he hits my Lele for 140 and I made sure to take the last knockout on the Ralts with the Lele with a with a psychic and a DC. I specifically made the made like I put the game into the position where the Lele is up front because I knew he would be forced to attack with the Sylvie on that turn. And he does it and I go DC choice band. Kukui, 210, energy drive. And he's just like, scoop. So I'm pre feeling pretty good. I just 2 0 a Guardi. And I'm telling all my friends, yo, guys, I just hit Guardi again. And they're like, you're screwing with us, right? You didn't hit Guardi a third time. And I'm like, yo, I hit Guardi a third time. And they're like, yo, how? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, so you tied again? And I'm like, no, dude, I won. They're like, no, what? And I'm like, yeah, I energy tried for 210. 210. And they're like, ah. <laughs> so I'm like feeling really hyped. And I'm like full of energy. Right? And I'm getting really excited. And this video is long because I see it's dark outside now. But I don't care. I'm super excited. And I go into my next round, right? And my next round was Bulu. So he just flips over that Bulu or Grubbin or whatever. Like he's like, yo man, Bulu's the best deck. Bulu is super consistent and good. I'm gonna pop ya. And I'm like, no, you ain't. So I won that round, because Bulu's bad. And Bulu draws bad. Game one he bricked. I destroyed him. Game two, he bricked even harder. To the point where he never even got Vicavolt into play. He literally just put up guys to die. I spent like five turns setting up before I even attacked. 
And then I went Guzma Grubbin knockout. Guzma Grubbin knockout. Knockout of Rangaroo. He puts up a Bulu. I two shot it. He puts up another Bulu with a choice band and three energy, and he one shots me. And I'm at like one prize. And he's like, oh man, I shouldn't have benched two Guz uh, Grubbin on this turn, because now you're just going to Guzma and win. And he's being really salty, because he had been throwing his cards every time, because he couldn't get a draw supporter, and he couldn't get anything going, he couldn't get Vickavolt set up, so he's like, he's like throwing his cards down, and he's like, oh, all huffing and puffing, because he's bricking, and I'm like, my dude, it's Bulu. Like, what did you expect? Uh, so instead of using the, uh, and I pal padded two Guzmas back into my deck the previous turn. And he still benched two Grubbins to give me that. But because he was being so salty, I decided to Wombo Combo. And I went Devoured Field, Choice Band, Kukui. 180. Seven prize game. And he was mad. Uh, but, you know, that's what happens when you're a salt. When you were just, you were full of sodium chloride to the brim. I punish you for it. Uh, so in the next round, uh, my friends are like, yo, if you win this round, you can ID into day two. And I'm like, oh no, are you telling me this is a winning in? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh no, you know I don't win winning ins. So I go against Malamar Shrine, and he goes, brick. And I go, knockout, 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 knockout. And he's like, okay, high school. Uh, and then game two, he actually got set up really well. And he just like kind of like blew me out of the water. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to lose my winning. What's going on? No, I can't do this. <laughs> it's my time. <laughs> and he goes, uh, and then game three, and he just like super bricks hard. And, like, like ne never gets a Malamar in play. Or, no, no. Yeah, he never gets even a Malamar in play. At game one, he got Malamars in play. I just made sure he never got energy in his discard. Uh, because he, like, he loaded up an Oranguru game one. And I knocked out everything but the Oranguru. Just to make sure that energy never went in the discard. Um, but game three, he never even got, like, Malamars out. And he just kind of put things up and let them die. And he couldn't really do anything, and he was pretty upset. He wasn't, like, salty, because, you know, like, during game three, and, like, like just before, like, the handshake, he was, like, super salty. But, like, he just, like, took a deep breath, and he's, like, he's, like, okay, well, what can you do? And I can always respect a player when they can do that, because I try my best to do it myself, uh, although I'm not always like that. I'm just very glad that... The previous opponent to this opponent was like a complete 180, like salt fest to losing gracefully. So that was cool. Uh, so then I go into the uh, ID and make day two round. And all my friends are like, yo, you're going to get down paired. Yo, you're going to get up paired. Your opponent's not going to want to ID. You're going to lose. And I'm like, oh no, you're right. I never lose. I never win win innings. I never get the ID into anything except for League Cups. Yo, what's going on? I can't do this. And then I'm about to sit down and offer the ID. And before my butt even gets into the chair, this dude, Main Ahmed, my boy, he goes, do you want an ID? And I'm like, yo, yes. Handshake. And he's like, oh, thank God. I'm so tired. I'm going to misplay so bad this game. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you good? Were you IDing in, boy? He's like, yeah. Except that's not actually how the conversation went at all. But it was, yeah, it was, but I didn't say, yo, boy. I, I just say that when I'm excited. But no, he's like, yeah, no, I'm super tired. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm probably not gonna play well. I'm really glad that you accepted the ID. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'd rather guarantee it. And he's like, cool, yeah. So we just talked for a little while, and then we signed the slip as soon as it came. I brought it up, and I was in day two. Uh, all of my friends couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Um, it had never happened to me before. Um, and uh, actually quite a few of my friends uh, managed to ID in 
Um, one of my friends actually was guaranteed already, and he tried to play it out and lost. Uh, that sucked. Uh, my friend Alan wanted to ID the last two rounds in, but he got up paired the uh, round eight and was forced to play it out and lost. But then the last round, he was able to ID and at the table next to me. I saw a table to my left. It was a 19 pointer versus an 18 pointer. So the 18 pointer wanted to ID. Uh, the 19 pointer wanted to play it out because he, you know, obviously, like, why? There's no reason not to play it out if you're already at the 19 points of guaranteed day two. So, um, apparently, as I come to find out the next day, that match ended up tying naturally. Uh, which uh, made uh, an even greater meme, which I will get to. So, we go to Buffalo Wild Wings, we celebrate the fact that I make day two, uh, and it was pretty cool. Um, everybody's, like, super excited for me, for my hotel room. Uh, so shout out to the guys, um, Alex... Vinny, Hannah, Brian, John Boy, Joe, you know, we all had a really good time, and it was great, and I got to actually get some sleep. Uh, the night before, everybody kept me up. I only got four and a half hours of sleep going into day one. Going into day two, I had about six and a half hours of sleep. Uh, the four and a half wasn't even good sleep, it was just sleep. It, like, I was able to function. I functioned pretty much entirely off of adrenaline. Uh, the six and a half hours I got, got of sleep into day two was actually pretty good. I wish it was more, but I still woke up pretty refreshed, so that was cool. Uh, took a shower, uh, went to the venue a little early, was there before it opened. Uh, going in uh, round one, day two, so round number ten, I hit Edward Doherty. Now, I met this guy at a cup in Danbury, Connecticut. Maybe two weeks before or something like that three weeks before maybe something like that I think two weeks before but I could be wrong and uh at that point we were both like out of top eight contention by a long shot and both of our opponents didn't show up so we played a game anyway and uh, we had a good time and I beat him right and he was super friendly um so we're playing round one and day two and he is shuffling. And I see a fairy energy. And I'm like, oh no. This is how it ends. I'm going to lose every round day two. Because I'm going to start off by hitting a Gardevoir. I always lose round one at a regional. And I made it to day two. Is this going to be the end? Am I going to lose round one at a regional in day two? But nah, son, we made it. Uh, he drew pretty bad both games. Uh, <laughs> but we had a good match. Um, game one, uh, he whiffed a max potion. If he had hit the max potion, he won. If he did not hit the max potion, I won. Is pretty how is pretty much how it went. Um, if he hit the max potion, he was put in a really good position where I would have had to re, uh, hit Guardy two more times, and he would have been able to take a knockout because um, he had hit me the previous turn or something. Um, it would have put him ahead in prizes. Like It would have just been a huge swing turn if he got that max potion, but he whiffed it, even off of, I think, two trades. So I was really happy that he whiffed that max potion. Um, game two, he just drew really bad. I did the Guzma Ralph's knockout thing, so he was playing a Quadzora deck game two, essentially, and I just, I won out. Um, I made sure, uh, he played a really spicy Buzzwool in it with two unit energy, so I made sure that I actually put my weakness policies down, just in case, and I made sure to take knockouts in a way to where the Sledgehammer wouldn't activate just in case, and I managed to clutch that victory out, so I'm really happy that I'm still, like, so day one ended undefeated, I was 5-0-4, and, and then game one, uh, round one, day two, I end up winning, so that was super clutch, I'm still undefeated, I'm 6-0-4, oh, and, um, and then I hit a Rayquaza deck, so I have not hit a single Rayquaza deck at this point in the tournament. The Dene has been completely useless. I'm like, man, I should have just not changed this card. I should have just played Sudowoodo instead. But then I hit a Rayquaza, and I know that it's Rayquaza going in. 
So I have an opening hand with a Dedenne, and I start the Dedenne. And I'm like, yo, I'm gonna win. And he flips over, and he starts Rayquaza, and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna win. And he's like, oh no, Dedenne. And then I look through my deck, and I prized Coco. So I go, oh no. Actually, no, I didn't start the Dedenne. I, I, I started Dedenne on my bench, but I still, like, searched it out. I put a Choice Band DC on it, and he just goes, Guzma, knockout. And I'm like, okay. And he gets Vickervolt into play, he loads up on energies, and he just knocks a whole bunch of my guys out, and I lose. Uh, pretty one-sided. Uh, game two, he, uh, what's it? So I looked through my deck, and I did not prize Coco this time. I prized Dedenne. And then he goes, Tempest GX, to draw 10 cards, with two Grubbin on his bench. And then his second turn, he goes Rare Candy, Big Ball, Rare Candy, Big Ball. And he puts a whole bunch of energy in play in one turn. He uh, stupidly uses a bunch of Stormy Winds, which somehow just don't end up discarding any relevant cards. So he ends up with just like, I don't know, like hitting me for 270 on turn two or something crazy like that. Like, it's just absolutely insane. And I lose. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. Okay, first loss of the tournament. I'm um, I'm still happy with that. You know, whatever. Uh, day two is not going to go as well. Uh, I'm not going to make top eight at this point because uh, if I get one more loss, I don't make top eight. But that's fine because I had a good tournament run. I'm just happy being in day two. I'm guaranteed points no matter what, so that's cool. I just at this point I'm really hoping just just to get top thirty two. I would have felt really disappointed if I bumped down to top 64, because I am started I started at 49th seed. Uh, and then the next round, I hit... Zorak Golisopod. So I see him uh, flip over the Zorua, and then bench a Wimpod. And I go, oh no, uh, we're going to tie, or I'm going to lose. Because he's not going to be stupid enough to play a bunch of items, right? But no, he's stupid enough to play a bunch of items. He plays Acapricorn Maker for some stupid reason. And he just puts... Like, uh, like, Nesp uh, like Apricorn Maker is a better card in something like a Zorark deck than it is in any other deck. Uh, because you can get the Timer Walls to get, like, double Zorark off of one card, you know, stuff like that. So it's like, it's not like that I disagree with the fact that he plays Apricorn Maker, but I disagree with the fact that he played Apricorn Maker against a Garbodor deck. I don't think he knew that game one. Uh, I might have started with a Trubbish on my bench though, so if I did, then that was still a stupid call to play the Apricorn Maker against. Uh, but he like double nest balls turn one with Apricorn Maker both games. Uh, game one. I kind of like steamrolled him, I believe. Like, it was still a fairly close match, but I ended up pulling it out because I Guzma knocked out Wimpods. Like, he would ace a Rolla, and I would Guzma knock out the Wimpod, even if it put me down to odd prizes. And then eventually I just ended the game by Guzma Lele knockout or something. Uh, game two, uh, he played like five items or something, and it gets to a point where. I'm probably, or, or no, game two, I like super brick and I scoop early. Like, I think I started Coco and then Kukweed and drew another Kukui and a Devoured Field. And I'm like, okay, I scoop. And he's like, okay, I guess, I guess we have time for game three. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, so, um, so game three. It gets to a point where he is set up, right? And he has two Galissapods in play. He's He just first impressioned with one. So he just Guzma first impressioned. And I'm like, oh no, uh, I need to do something really spicy this turn or else I lose. Uh, and I look at my hand and I trade a few times, like two or three times. And I go, okay, my best play is to Guzma Galissapod, hit it with Trash Lanch for a two shot and hope that with his 20 card hand, that he doesn't have Guzma. And sure enough, he trades like three times. His deck is like four cards. 
he has like a 25 card hand and he does not have a single Guzma. And I'm like, oh my god, did I just win this game? And I do. So then I hit, I hit again with Trash Lanch. I knock out the uh, Galissapod GX. And now I'm ahead on prizes with uh, Garbolder active. So if he knocks it out, he's still behind on prizes. And then it ends up getting to a point where I had flying flipped with Choice Man Kukui on a Zorark. So that then I can respond with a Riot of Speed in the next turn to knock them out. Uh, he Ace Rollers to heal that damage off. But there's still 20 left on the Lele. So then after I take a two shot on the new Zorark, uh, he realizes that he has just enough items in his discard to where if I choice band, uh, I'm hitting 150. Like he had six items in his discard pile. So if I choice band Guzma, I knock out Lele. So he max potions the Lele to heal the 20 off. Which puts one more item in his discard, which means Trash Relanch with a choice band is hitting 170. So I choice band Guzma. Knock out Lele. And then I win. So at that point, I had kind of like put him in a checkmate position, and there wasn't anything he could do to get out of it. So I just, like at this point, I'm like just feeling like I'm super lucky, because there's no reason I should have won that matchup, and I just got super lucky. Um, the next round, I hit former senior world champion Zach Bakari. And uh, this kid I know from my locals uh, is like, yo, you're going to lose to a world champion. And I'm like, what is he playing, Buzzwool? I saw his brother the round before sitting next to me. He's playing Buzz GX, so I know this guy's playing Buzz GX because, you know, if they're brothers, they're probably playing the exact 60, right? And a ton of my friends were playing the Buzz GX deck. Uh, one of A couple of them made it into day two with Buzz GX. So I already know that they're playing at least one Acerola in the deck. So I actually have... And I know that they're playing Zygarde GX as well. So I actually know, like very close to, if not the exact 60, that Zach Bakari is playing going into the match. So I'm actually feeling somewhat confident, even though it's like 50-50 at best, uh, because of the Zygar GX and everything. Um, so I go into it, uh, he plays one Acro Bike, and I start Trubbish. So then I choice band the Trubbish, I evolve into Garbodor, I attach a Psychic Energy, and I hit him for 100. <laughs> and he's like, oh no. He jet punches me, and I trash range for 100 again and knock him out. So that's how that game went. So I ended up cleaning up game one pretty, pretty handily. Um, it ended up getting actually somewhat close. I made sure to like Guzma knock out um, Rockruffs as they came about, and I never saw Zygarde. But I know it's in there. Um, game two, uh, he ace rollers at one point after I had put like. Latios or Coco damage. I think I, I I think I hit him with Latios, and then he Ace Rolled the Buzzwool, and he did like some Feast Ring things, and he just like he closed out the game like pretty handily. Uh, he ends up winning with Sledgehammer Guzma Switch or something like that, and he like just shows me the cards. He doesn't do the play, and he's like, oh, and I'm like, what? What did you just say? What? And I'm like, I'm like, I see the Guzma Switch in his hand, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, do you have? energy and he's like yeah yeah and i'm like oh all right, all right so i just scoop uh and then they deck check us uh we pass we get like a seven minute extension uh all my friends are confused because we go into time but we're not actually in time because we had the time extension so they're like oh this game's not gonna finish but we still we were playing really fast both of us and it gets to a point where um if he so he b strings to put two energy on his uh, on his baby Buzzwall, and then he B strings again for his benched uh, Buzz GX, and he fails that B string, and he just like attaches for turn to it or something, or maybe he doesn't attach for turn at all, or he attaches for turn. I don't remember, but he he failed that B string, and then he plays out a bunch more cards and a supporter, and then he B strings again just to thin it out. So I'm like, okay, this. Uh, this, um, like, if he B-stringed to his bench, Buzz GX, I lost. But he failed it, because he was out of energy. So I'm feeling pretty good. Um, but, if he flips, because he has, 
Diancy on his bench. Uh, and he didn't get the beast energy for his active, uh, for the swing around to guarantee the knockout on Trashalanche. So he has to flip at least one heads. And if he does, my only good enough attacker is the, um, is the, uh, Garbodor on my bench. So I could, like, I think I could knock him out, but I think he still had some sort of other attacker, and he would have knocked me out, and then I would have lost. Um, but if he flipped double tails, I could knock him out with that Garbodor, and then he could, yeah, because I had 90 on that Garbodor, so he could have jet-punched me for a knockout. Um, so if, so if he flips double tails, I get to keep both garbs in play that turn. I knock him out, go down to two prizes, Guzma, knockout, buzz GX, and win. Because he has a lot of items in his discard. He had to play a ton. Um, he flips double tails. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, I won? He can't end me. <laughs> That's not in this format anymore. He can judge me, but I have enough trades. I'll get it back. I'll get the Guzma. I pop hatted stuff in. It's good. Uh, so yeah, he flipped double tails. If he flipped one heads, he won. He flipped double tails, so I won. And I just show him the Guzma, and uh, on the next, uh, I knock him out, and then the next turn I go to and I go Guzma, Buzzwell, GX, and he scoops because he knows he lost. And I'm like feeling super lucky, and it's also turn two of time. So if I didn't win that turn, we tied. So had he played a judge and I whiffed the Guzma, like I, I would have cried. <laughs> and all my friends are like, oh, oh crap, you beat the world champion, Zach Bakari. Oh my god, how did you do that? Oh, I didn't realize you got a time extension. <laughs> like, like Chris was watching my game. He's like, I, I had no idea why you guys were still playing. Like you went like four turns past time. Like, what were you doing? I, I didn't realize you got a time extension. I'm like, yeah, we got deck checked. He's like, that was a pretty good win. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, so now, uh, my friends are telling me at this point that if I win the last two rounds, I actually make it into top eight. So I'm like, you're telling me I'm on a winning end, and I never win winning ends except for this tournament. So now I'm actually feeling pretty good, and I hit Zorok, and he does Zorok things. Game one. And I lose. Because I can't trash Lanch his R, uh, Lycanroc, because it's fat, and he doesn't play items. He just runs through me with Claw Slash, because I can't draw weakness policy. And I'm like, sweet. Okay. Or no, did I win game one? No, no. Uh, yeah, 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 that's how that went. So in game two, I get super lucky. I take, I go like, Guzma, Zorark, after, I like, Flying Flip. And then I Guzma Zorark, Field Blower the Choice Band off of it, put on my own Choice Band, and Trash Lanch for exact knockout. And then that put me in a position where I just kind of like steamrolled him with Trash Lanch and I won. So then we go into game three, and I just like super brick hard. And I have like two Pokemon in play, and he just runs through them with Claw Slash, and I lose. So I'm like, well, not making top eight. Um, maybe top 16 if I'm super lucky, but I'm like basically just like, I'm like hoping for top 32. Like, I think I can tie and make top 32 because my resistance is fairly good. Uh, but I wasn't 100% sure. And I go against, uh, Grant Manley the last round. And he's actually like, he's got like the pairings thing open and he's doing all the math in his head. And I like see the numbers fly like like Rain Man, or like that scene from The Hangover, and, um, and Grant's, like, he's, he's like, okay, there's 37 potential people with the same record, or there's 30, there's 37 people who can make top 32, so five are gonna bubble, uh, potentially more, potentially less. He's like, I don't feel safe IDing, and I said, that's fair, we'll play it out. Uh, he's playing Bulu, so Bulu does Bulu things for him, and game one, we play the grossest match I've ever played in my life, second to the time 
Eric Smith from Rare Candy rip clawed me for 140 and flipped heads in Virginia Regionals of like a whole year ago. But like this match, I have two DC on this Lele, and I've taken three prizes. And he hard attached to Bulu enough times to knock me out. And he still doesn't have a Vicka Volt in play. But he knocked out my Lele, and I draw, and I have nothing. And then he plays Rare Candy Vicka Volt, and I lose. I just scoop right there. I'm like, I'm done. I can't. I can't do this. And he's like, Wow, that's the worst game I've ever played in my life. And I'm like, Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. Um, game two was actually fairly close, uh, but I end up squeaking it out barely. Uh, I don't really remember how, uh, but I think he got like turn five. No, he got like he got like turn three or four Vicavolt. Uh, but I had a really slow start. So I wasn't really taking like more than like one or two knockouts before that anyway. So it was just rough. Um, I barely squeaked out that win. Because he would have won the next turn, I think. And then game three. Uh, he, I think he, like he starts boot. Oh, and he, Stevens resolved first turn that second game too. Um, but game three, he goes, wow, I prized Stevens resolve. For the second time this match, so that means he probably Stevens Resolve first game. And he's like, he goes through his deck, and I think he plays like Cynthia or Lily or something instead. And uh, he, he doesn't have much of a setup. He, he gets set up kind of slow, uh, and it gets to the point where the match is still really close. Um, but I pal pad back in two Kukwis. I have Devoured Field in play. I have another in my hand in case he field blowers it. And I have two choice bands in my hand. So I'm going to wombo combo the crap out of Grant the next two turns. And there's nothing he can do about it save a judge. And I don't think he's playing judge at this point. Um, so he proceeds to... Uh, so I proceed the next turn to wombo combo. Devoured Field, choice band, kukui, one shot. He puts up a Bulu, he goes Choice Band, Strong Charge, Attach, one shot on Zark. So I put up another Zark, I bench a Trubbish or something, I put a Choice Band down on it, and I Kukui. Because uh, after I pal padded the two back in, I traded twice and I drew both of them, so I already had them in my hand. So then I go Devoured Field, Choice Band, Kukui, again. And I one shot him. And had I not been able to do that, and if he found... Yeah, so if, had I not been able to do that, I still think he might have been able to win the next turn. Um, he might have been at three prizes, though. Um, so even still, if he... Like, it was it was still somewhat close, but he's like, that's, like, super gross. And he's like, but I should have expected as much because I'm playing Bulu. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I guess. So at that po this point, I know I'm locked top 32. And I see the final standings, I'm looking at them, and I got 18 on Resistance. Like, I bubbled out of top 16. Uh, the match that was next to me when I was playing Grant was the two Bakari brothers playing. And Zach ended up losing. And I have the exact same opponents and opponents' opponents win percentage as the guy in 17th. Uh, but then uh, the elder Bakari, I think his name's Justin Bakari, maybe? I don't know. I'm not good with names. Uh, he, his resistance was like 62% or something, and mine was 57, so there's no way I was making top 16. So good for him. Uh, I'm still happy for the top 32. Uh, my friend Jason, uh, shout out to the Muff Squad YouTube channel, which just uh, started out. Uh, shout out to you guys. I, I'm very much a fan of the channel already. Um, um, shout out to Jason for getting 19th. Uh, shout out to my friends uh, Anthony. Uh, for me, my friend Anthony made top 64 or something with Ho-Oh Kiawe. He made D2 with Ho-Oh. Like, yo, here's the highest performing Ho-Oh of the tournament. My friend Al, uh, my friend, uh, Alan, uh, played that Buzzwole with the Acerola and the Zygarde GX deck. Um, he made, I think, top 64, maybe. Um, I know Brian Hunter... Uh, uh, my friend Brian Hunter, uh, made top 32, I think. Um, Dead Draw Gaming did, like, super well the whole tournament. Um, so, like, Brian Hunter, 
uh, made day two, uh, got like top 32 or something, and uh, I know Caleb Gedimer and Daniel Altabila and Rukon, they all did really well, so shout out to, you know, my friend's team, essentially, for locking so many top spots. Um, shout out to my friend, uh, who happens to also be named Nick, who made 11th in top 16. Uh, he was at a point where he tied, uh, round 14 and, uh, didn't, uh, ask for the win or try to flip for it because he doesn't cheat. So he took the tie and then won the next round and guaranteed top 16. So shout out to him for not being a cheater. <laughs> um, uh, and then, uh. I'm sure I'm forgetting people. Um, shout out to all the locals uh, from Carwin's Game Store, Catskill, for cheering me on in day two. Um, shout out to the Carwin's Game Store Poughkeepsie guys, because you all made day two. <laughs> well, most of you, at least. Um, uh, shout out to uh, my friend Chris, again, for giving me the list. And I think he made top 128 or something. Shout out to my friend Hannah. She made top... 256. Shout out to my friend Alex Gaden, Alex Gonzalez. He made uh, top 128, I think. Uh, sh sh shout out to all the rest of the guys in my hotel room, like Vinny. I think he made, I think he got points. Uh, uh, there was, a, I think Brian was his name, was the new guy in our hotel room. He was cool. Played Garchomp. <laughs> like, Garchomp's good, man. It is. He didn't do well, but, like, Garchomp is actually, like, a threat. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting people. Uh, uh, shout out to, yeah, shout out to the Muff Squad, because Jason made 19th, um, Mike Newey made top 64, I think, with Bulu. Like, he was, he, he drew well with Bulu until day two. Um, I have a league challenge coming up this weekend in Amsterdam, New York. So I'm going to drive like an hour plus out, uh, north to play in just a league challenge, even though I have 25 points from league challenges already. Uh, I'm going to try to record some videos just because I, like, I'm back into the YouTube thing. So we're going to see how it goes. Um, uh, the tournament was insane. It was super fun. Uh, I had a blast. Even if I didn't make day two, I would have considered it a really good weekend. Uh, but I ended up with 60 points. I'm at 85 now. Um... I still need some cup finishes. I'm feeling really good about my chances of getting an invite this year. Um, but, you know, you never know what it's going to be. I'm, I'm going to just assume 500 points for this year until otherwise specified. Uh, who knows when the end of July is. Um, my final record against Gardevoir decks, which I consider an auto loss with this deck, was 2-0-2. Um, so that's insane. Like that's just absolutely insane. Like I don't know how I did that. Uh, and I did see the RK9 Labs like final like meta whatever where it shows like the tally of all the decks that were played. I was the only Zoro Garb out of 31 to make day two. And uh, if you count the Sylveon, the Gardevoir and the uh, Zorak or Gardevoir uh, decks, um, the total percentage of those like Gardevoir variants or Sylveon variants in the field was 3.6%, and I hit Gardevoir four times, and I still came out positive against them. So it honestly shows that with a little bit of skill and a ton of luck, that you can clutch out even some really bad matchups, and you can have a really good tournament run. I ended with, so, top 32 at 18th place, netted me $250, uh, one booster box. Uh, out of my booster box, I pulled a full art, reverse hollow, and regular hollow Stevens Resolve, two, like, uh, Shrine of Punishments, like, uh, Secret Rare, Angry Chicken, Blaziken Guy, uh, and, like, I, I actually, like, made my money's back in the box. It was pretty cool. Um, normally I would sell it, but I was feeling, like, I was feeling lucky. I got this 
So I got the cool Blaziken mat. Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna like etch 18th place onto it with a sharpie just for the meme, um, or like top 32 or something onto it. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I, I think it would be funny if I did that. Um, but yeah, um, I had a really good tournament. Um, uh, my next regional will be Roanoke in November. Uh, I always drive out to Roanoke. It's like an eight and a half hour, nine hour drive, but it's an easy one, and we're going to see how that goes. Um, at some point in the future, I'm probably going to play Waylord at a uh, an expanded regional if I can, because I love Waylord, and it's nuts. Uh, but i um, kind of just rambling now. Um, look forward to more videos. Um, I'm going to try to upload to this channel somewhat. Uh, I don't know how often, how often, um, and again, no monetization, I'm not going to take it too seriously, but we're just going to see how it goes. I'm having fun, uh, I think that I have a little bit of insight into the game that can be shared with others, uh, and if I improve one person's tournament run, then I think that I made a difference and that, you know, it was all worth it, but I'm just kind of having fun, uh, and we'll see how it goes, so I will see you guys next time. Uh, hopefully with another t day two regional tournament report in deck, you know, we'll see. Uh, later.